I do choose. He approached the healer. He begged him. He pleaded with him. He bowed down before him. He knelt before him. And the words he said, if you choose, you can make me clean. If you choose, if you see the pain, if you see how long I have been suffering, if you see that I can't be me, if you see that I want to be well, I want to be clean and able to join life, I want to participate in community, I want to belong. If you choose, you can make me clean. Jesus saw him. Jesus was moved by him. Jesus saw what was missing in his life because of this illness. Jesus saw into his heart. Moved. Jesus reaches out. Jesus touches this man who no one will touch. Who people walk by and avert their eyes. Who has been cast out and cast aside. Jesus touched him and said... I do choose, be made clean. I do choose, be made clean. The Holy One of God, the Holy has drawn near to us this day, in this place, in this space, in this moment. The Holy One looks at you, is moved by compassion, touches you and says be well welcome to worship no matter who you are no matter where you are on your faith journey no matter what is holding you back no matter what is making you feel unclean unwell unwanted here in this space here with me, here with the holy drawing near, you are welcome. We are continuing our journey through the Gospel of Mark. And this week we stop with Jesus as a leper comes and begs from him. This is from Mark 1, 40 through 45. A leper came to him begging him and kneeling. He said to him, if you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once, saying to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go. Show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely to spread the word so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed in the country, and people came to him from every quarter.
Does one word matter? Does one word in a passage of scripture make a difference? Does it matter if one word has been changed, deliberately changed, to change the entire meaning of the text, to change how we view the Holy One of God, to change our perception of who Jesus is? Does one word matter? In verse 41 of our passage today, it says, Jesus was moved with pity. Now, you can open your Bible and you may find different translations, but many of them come down on the side of moved with pity, moved with compassion. It's a translation choice or a scribal error made early in this text. And because of that scribal error or scribal choice, we have this understanding of Jesus as a, as a holy and full of compassion. We have this understanding of Jesus being moved by pity and compassion. And so can you picture in your head that, that scribe? that they have just got a new commission to create a new Bible because of a new church or the patron has paid for it. And so that, that monk, that scribe, is there reading through the text and copying down the text word for word. And he gets to this passage and he had read through it and then he stopped. He read the words. Jesus was angry. Jesus was indignant. Jesus was full of righteous anger. Jesus was angry. And that scribe, that monk in that room, didn't like that image of Jesus. Didn't like that feeling of Jesus as angry. What was Jesus angry about? So that scribe made a decision and decided to get rid of the word angry and replace it with the word compassion, pity. And so for hundreds of years, since the 5th century CE, since the Codex Bazai, it's the only Greek translation that expresses anger. Many of the scribes who translated this passage, wrote it down, copied it, decided to deal with the problem of Jesus' anger by just removing it. They solved the problem. They took the phrase out. It's no longer an issue. We don't have to deal with Jesus' anger. But others didn't like that solution, so they made a word choice. Instead of anger, they chose pity, they chose compassion. They decided that that word changed, created an image of Jesus, the Holy One of God, as a compassionate man moved, moved by pity, moved by compassion when seeing the hurt and pain in front of us. And let's be honest, we love that image of Jesus. We want Jesus to hear a cry for help, to hear someone in pain crying out for wholeness and healing, to hear someone pleading for their life to be different, and for Jesus reach out, touch them, comfort them, to have Jesus be the one who embodies compassion, who is the love of God poured out in the world. We want Jesus to be kind because we aren't always kind. We want Jesus to show compassion because sometimes we're full of contempt. We want Jesus to care because too often our hearts don't.
And so it's easy to understand how that monk in that room changed that word. Went from an angry Jesus to a compassionate Jesus. But what does that word change do to this text, to this story, to our understanding of who Jesus is? For Jesus to be angry makes him much more like us. Maybe too much like us. Maybe that's why that scribe made that decision to change that word from anger to compassion. And it gets you to thinking about this text. What would it mean to see in this story that when that man cries out to Jesus on his knees, if you choose, you can make me well, to wonder about Jesus' anger. Who is it directed at? Because think about all the energy and passion in this gospel text. For this first chapter of Mark, everything happens at a fast clip. There is so much going on. There is so much taking place. Everything is immediate and full steam ahead. We have Jesus having to sneak away to rest and pray because everyone is eager to be touched by him, to be healed by him. So when that leper begs him, pleads with him, yells at him, if you choose, you can make me well. Did Jesus just have enough? Did his temper flare and he snapped at the man and his statement of healing is one of those times you said to your children, fine. Even though you were seething inside, you said fine as your husband is doing the exact thing you don't want done. You said fine. Is your anger directed at that man? Is Jesus' anger directed at that man, that leper, that beggar, that person in need of healing because he is worn out and worn down, because he is tired and he is through with his healing that he just wants to go back to that desert place, to that lonesome place, to that place where he was so connected to God. And so he is angry that his time and attention is called once more, once again, for always, all the time, drawn, pulled out by these people in need, these people wanting more and more from him. So did he just snap and say, fine. I do choose. Be well. But what if it's the anger? What if the anger that Jesus expresses in this passage is directed at the system? What if the anger that Jesus is expressing isn't at the man before him, but the community around him that has let this happen? What if his anger is about the society that chooses to show too little compassion? Is this an anger that is asked? directed at the people that have chosen winners and losers. And this man, this man with leprosy is on the losing side, forced to beg to survive, forced to be separated from his family and community. Is Jesus angry that when he looks around, he sees that his community that the people that should be taking care of this man, that should be touching this man, that should be holding him, that should be healing him, don't care for the sick and the poor in their midst? Is he angry that we care so little for each other? So even while angry, angry at a world that forced this man to beg, that forced this man to leave his family, even as he's angry in that moment, 
He touches that man. He reaches out with his hand, his healing power, and chooses to make him clean, to make him well. Does knowing that Jesus got angry at the repressive forces of his day, at the injustice and lack of compassion from his society, change your view of who the Holy One of God is? Does Jesus' anger help you to own your own righteous indignation at the forces at play in our own society that still live people out in the cold with health care that is just out of reach, that force people to choose between food and medicine, that forces doctors to choose when looking at people who is the one I should save with this limited supply of oxygen that I have to make life and death decisions because we haven't given them enough. Does Jesus' anger at the lack of compassion in society help you to see those forces in play that keeps people out from a whole and healthy and full life. A society like ours that chooses some people to be healed and some to die because of lack of access and money. Does it make you angry that there are people who we have decided don't deserve to be healed, to be part of our culture, who can be treated differently and poorly? Does it make you angry? I admit that sometimes I want to embrace that anger. I want to embrace Jesus' anger at the lack of compassion around him that he is experiencing, at that lack of care for those who most need it. I want to get indignant at the forces of oppression. But part of me also wants to be moved by compassion, not pity, but compassion. I want my heart wide open to the pain of the world so I can't just walk by in a cloud of indifference, that I can't just ignore the pain around me, that I can't just walk through my life and not see what's before my eyes, the pain in front of me. I want to be moved by compassion. I want to be moved with a heart wide open to the pain in the world. I want to be moved so that I can see those in need of healing in front of me, that those whose pain is desperate. I want to be moved with compassion, and then I want that anger to help me to act to act to change a society that isn't moved by compassion, that doesn't see pain and set out to heal. I want both translations of this word. I want a Jesus who sees someone in pain, who sees someone who needs to be healed, and reaches out and touches them and heals them and makes them well. But I also want that anger. That anger, that experience of knowing that our society as a whole has chosen to create winners and losers, has chosen to reward some people and harm others. And I want that anger to fuel me to help change the world, to make the entire society, the entire community more compassionate and more caring so that we don't 
ignore the pain around us, that we don't walk by not even seeing a person in need of our compassion. I want that righteous anger to fuel me so that my heart opens enough to feel compassion and be moved to act. Amen. I want you to close your eyes and I want to pick you to picture yourself in the story today. Picture yourself seeing Jesus and you call out to him. There's something that been, has been holding you back, making you doubt yourself, or there is an illness in your life. As Jesus sees you and starts towards you, you fall to your knees and cry out. If you choose, you can make me well. Can you picture yourself saying that? If you choose, you can make me well. Jesus is full of compassion. He stretches out his hand and touches you saying, I do choose, be well. I do choose. Be well. Let those words of compassion work on you. Feel the words moving through you. I do choose. Be well. On your in-breath here, I do choose. And on your out-breath here, be well. I do choose. Be well. I do choose. Be well. Breathe in and out. Jesus sees your pain, your struggle, and chooses to be there with you and says, be well. Be well. Jesus, you were moved by compassion. You were moved by compassion for the ill and the hurting. You were moved by compassion. You saw that he was being left behind. You saw that he was being excluded from community. You saw what he wanted, cleanness wasn't just about his illness. It was about being included in community. So you cleansed him and invited him to become part of that community. Jesus, you were moved by compassion for the ill and hurting, for the left out and lost. Move our hearts that we too may be moved by compassion. Jesus, move, be moved by compassion for family and friends who are sick family and friends who are recovering from surgery, for those who are grieving, those who have been left behind, those who are anxious and depressed and lonely. Be moved with compassion for those who are hungry, for those who are searching for work, for those who need a home, a safe place to land. Be with our government and teach them to be moved by compassion be with a new life in our midst. Jesus, be moved by compassion with our prayers to you now.
Jesus, may we be moved by compassion as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember, God loves you and always will. Jesus loves you and always will. I love you and always will. May you be fed by the Holy. May you hear Jesus say he chooses you. May you be moved by compassion. Amen.